All right, I'm just going to show you very quickly how I believe it would be easy, and at least in one week we would know one way or the other, if Governor Newsom is really interested, as he says he is, in one week his plethora of universities out there, Stanford and all of them, UC Berkeley and all these people that have these facilities, would know one way or the other whether my device will work, yes or no, and then we're off the case. And if they're right about muons, it will work. All right, the problem is, is they're relying on scientists that cannot speak for fear of their jobs. I can show, we can, I believe, within one week, I will know one way or the other. And it won't cost a penny. They have all this stuff just laying around at these universities. Take a couple of undergraduates, say, shine some lasers and see if you can increase the energy. And this is what happens. Now listen. This is what it's going to take. We all own this. Democrats, Republicans, House, Senate. So let me be clear. Climate change is an emergency. An emergency. Despite calling it one, President Biden has not officially declared climate change a national emergency. Let me tell you something. In one week, we would know whether we have any ability to use the thing that I am going to show you right now. All right, I'm not going to burden this thing. It's shown it way too many times. These are the particles of light. The black and the white is what Fermilab and CERN found, which is the muon neutrino and the electron neutrino. Normally they're bound together. We separated them in our venturi. So normally we could see them bound together here just prior to them exploding. And here they are, their energetic values. All right, there they are right there. Now, this is precisely what Fermilab and CERN have seen, only when they splatter their things together, they can't see them squirting like we did. We, we actually literally see them squirt. They're squirting. We're squirting muons. <laughs> no. So we've got muon and electron neutrinos. See, a muon neutrino is a black ball. It just stays the black ball. And then we've got electron neutrino turns into a white shower. Now, which one is the energetic one? I am not 100% certain. But one way or the other, we have, we, if we can separate these, which we did, we created an enormous amount of energy, which is muons. And that's it right there. That's, that's not my drawing. That's CERN, muon and muon neutrino. Electron and electron neutrino. Electron showers. And that's exactly what we created right there. From the particles right here that Fermilab and CERN found right here. This is a Fermilab point particle. Look, if you want to look up the article about it, it's Don Lincoln. Just put in what's the point. And you'll see it from 2013. They found these particles, just have no idea how to use them. We know how to, we know how to make them, we know how to use them, we know how to harvest them. Well, we don't know how to harvest them. That's the key. And that's what I want Governor Newsom to take some of his people from his university system and have them see. All they have to do is as simple as this. Do some engineering. Make a little tiny slit and make a venturi, which is a, basically a funnel that they have to go through. Their fields will crush each other and it will create the exact same thing as a Casimir effect. But instead of head on, they'll force into each other's fields. Then just the white squirts out. And I'm not guessing, it is right here. Then we put a receiver right here. If we can put a receiver to harvest it, we should get much, much, much more energy here than we started with. That's what the, the theory says. If we started with millions of electron volts here, we could have trillions over there. And that appears to be the case. Now, all we want to do is take a week, and all they care, I don't care about anything else. I don't care about excitation values and wavelengths. I don't care a bit about that. All I care is, to can we put a harvester here and get more energy right there than we started with over here? If that is the case, we are so golden, it's unbelievable, because this stuff is dirt cheap. I mean, literally dirt cheap. The receiver is a thin film receiving stuff. The laser, just a regular laser, they're all over the place now. Pulse red laser. Well, not you know, red. You want to go in the upper range of range. There's a lot of there's a little bit of engineering to do. But once we decide, can we 
accelerate that light by dividing and separating the muon from the electron neutrino, can we harvest energy? Can we increase this value? And already, I believe it was done, and I believe it was done by um, Cornell back in 2013, but they didn't know really what to make of it, and it's just sort of lost traction, which they all do. In 1978, they did a special meeting to see if they could somehow figure out how to use photons to do exactly what we're doing, exactly what we're doing. See, this is what really what they wanted to do was a photon collider. Instead, they made these gigantic machines to send protons. You see these big protons? When they come together and pinch and shoot off a particle, they think they came out of nowhere. No, they didn't. They're just like one of these little electrons goes flying off. Because they're starting with these big things here, bang, bang, and a little bit comes out, and they think, this is a Feynman diagram. Again, don't understand those either. Feynman says he didn't understand physics, or, um, anyway. This goes back to, look, um, do, 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 something that goes way back here. From 1978, they were going to try to do this. They had a special meeting. Here it is, right here. Physics case for studying photons. This is what they want us to study photons. Exactly what we did. Only we didn't collide them, we crushed them. The physics of photon collision has been a topic of some interest for many decades. Indeed, a special meeting in 78, 1978, that's a long time ago, discussed the prospects of such collisions at these colliders, who, which collided electrons with positrons from these years. Collisions are very clean as we're colliding photons, which are elementary particles, not composite ones, like protons. This, this um, former director, deputy spokesman person said from CERN, who was heading the project. It was first proposed to do this type of physics at the LHC many years ago, but the project didn't materialize then. They just don't, they, they get halfway through and they, they just give up. And they won't look at anything that doesn't support their side of the equation. And their side of the equation is wrong, totally wrong. So what do you do about that? Governor Newsom has to go to his university system. He's the only guy I can see that can help at this point. And if he's true to his word, he will. All right, there's a lot of things that have to change. Electron flood theory says that this is light. This is from a red pulse laser. There's no question it's light. They've seen these same particles at CERN, only when they splash them <coughs> together, they just have debris. We can see them. We know how they're set attached. We can see them separate. And this is not my drawing here. This is CERN. Muons and electron showers. Here they are right here. From the smallest particles that exist that they can find. And same with us because we're using light. So we didn't start with big protons smashing huge things together and then just digging through the debris. We literally shot the laser down through a venturi, which is created what's called the Warren effect, which divides the particles. And we can see that divide right here. There it is. Now, if Governor Newsom is true to his words, he certainly will contact me. I would absolutely expect some form of a contact. And if you have any way of contacting him, because I'm pretty much shut out everywhere. Uh, you know, everything comes up, don't, don't contact this guy, he's a nutcase. Well, that's because of my research into mud fossils, which are also true and realistic, and that is a goose. And I know exactly how it preserved in this manner, and that's his feathers, the pattern on his head. And inside these creatures is basalt and not feldspar. I understand it fully right now because of the great flood that occurred, which is, it drives them absolutely crazy because it points towards religion. All of these things fit together as a real nasty little puzzle. And if you want to fix the earth, you're going to have to start with reality.